You're listening to a CNA podcast. When we talk about sectors advancing new technology, projects and initiatives in the name of climate action, often the aviation industry comes to mind. Flying is a dirty business. There's lots happening with sustainable fuels, with hydrogen planes, industry-wide decarbonisation targets. But today we unpack why a lot of the progress seems to have remained grounded. Hi, and <laughs> welcome to Climate Conversations. I'm Jack Ward. Lee Ling Tan is here too. Hello to you. Hello, Jack. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> little guilt check for you. Do you fly often? Do you think about like carbon offsets? Does the planetary impact of your individual decisions change your, your thinking about travel? Wow, is that what really goes through your mind when you travel? <laughs> no, no do I'm I? not saying that, I'm asking you. <laughs> do I'm I fly often? You. No, no, not really. Not as much as I used to. I do go on vacation maybe two, three times a year these days. Mm. Mm. And on those flights, honestly, I don't really think about carbon offsets. I used to, and I used to also pay that carbon premium that's, uh-huh. that some yep. flights that yeah, you can add on. Yep. That you can add on, and, and it was my contribution to the climate fight. But nowadays, I travel with a young child, and there's really not much room to think about anything else when <laughs> that's happening. So what about you? Where did you go to for your vacation recently? Did you fly? Was it a guilt trip for you? Ha <laughs> ha. See what I did there? Um, <laughs> no, my most recent vacation was just in Thailand. So no, okay. I didn't fly too far, but I did take four domestic flights throughout that period. So mm-hmm. yeah, a little bit of flying and I don't pay for the carbon offsets. I think just being involved in this space quite a lot, I'm pretty aware of greenwashing and mm-hmm. I just don't have faith that many of those offsetting programs are necessarily effective. Mm -hmm. nor is giving a token amount of money to a company to offset my seat on that plane really going to save the planet. So, mm, not guilty, a little bit guilty. All right, (laughs) somewhere in the middle. A little bit of guilty is good, I guess. If there were alternatives, I would consider them. If they had hydrogen planes that I could jump on, yeah, Yeah. I'm I'm ready. That's not going to happen for a while, I think. Mm -mm. Okay. Let's jump into the quiz then. Last week wasn't so good for you, but maybe this week you'll Mm. recover. Have you ever wondered, have you ever wondered how many planes are up there in the sky at any one time? (laughs) Why do you (laughs) do this to me? (laughs) Well, that's our question Um, today. Can you count them? At peak times, this is the question, at peak times, and the clue is that that's typically on a Friday afternoon. In mm-hmm. the Northern Hemisphere, during the summer months, mm-hmm. how many planes are in the sky at one time? Oh, and this is grief. an estimate from Flight Radar. That's not, that's not an easy question. I mean, I have absolutely no idea. Let's see if you no can idea. get it roughly to the nearest, like 1,000, maybe. <laughs> okay. Ballpark. Ballpark. Right. Yeah. Let me have a think. Okay. Answers at the end. See how you go as well, listeners. Okay. Now for our main story this week. Climate change is a huge challenge for the aviation industry, it's clear. And given the sector makes up about 3% of all carbon emissions, the entire planet as well benefits from progress in the skies. A few years ago, it seemed like the race was on for which company would crack the code to clean up their operations the fastest and gain commercial advantage from green flying. But a lot of the headlines coming out of the aviation world lately and from big airline companies are largely negative, turning back the clock. You're right. Have you noticed and this? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. I have noticed this and I think it's timely to be discussing this topic right now. Here are just a few of those very headlines from the last few weeks that you're talking about. So. Global air travel surges while switch to clean jet fuel lags. And this is from Bloomberg. Mm. U.S. objects to recommendation on sustainable aviation fuels from Reuters. Airbus delays hydrogen plane amid, quote, huge, unquote, technological challenges. Also from Bloomberg. 
Now, we will unpack some of these issues in this podcast, but I think to start with, there is, as you mentioned, kind of a broad sense of a lack of ambition right now, not where not where it, it you, we expected it to be. And there are hurdles that many companies and governments are reluctant to push too hard to overcome, it seems. Mm, mm, yeah, definitely. It feels like there is this malaise right now when it comes to a lot of climate ambition. Companies don't want to say the word at all. I think that can be attributed in in some way to this global political environment that has emerged. The Trump administration and its band of climate agnostics are allowing, if not encouraging, this backslide on clean technology development and rollout. Let's look at some of those stories, though, that you mentioned because they're all kind of interesting insights into what's happening around a cleaner aviation sector. And they're just a few that we've picked out. There are so many that have been published over the past year. The first shows us that global air travel surged to record levels last year. It's up above pre-pandemic levels, up 10% on the previous year. So I was surprised to learn that we'd already got back to above pre-pandemic levels. Did you notice that, Lily, that we were mm-hmm. yeah, that we'd already gone past what we'd what we were at in 2019? Yeah, mm. I think globally I thought we were near or just slightly surpassed. Yeah. At, at the same time as well, airlines are consuming far less sustainable jet fuel than what was expected to this point. So, if you look around the world, most airlines have various pledges to start using more sustainable jet fuels as part of their efforts to reduce emissions over time. Yet, that's not really happening, according to the International Air Transport Association. So, look at the numbers. SAF made up about 0.3% of commercial aviation fuel consumption last year. Now, it's meant to increase by about 30 times to reach a 10% target by 2030. That seems pretty steep. And if you look at the website of the IATA, there's still a message of intent around working towards Mm. what they call an ambitious goal, which is a target of net zero carbon emissions by 2050. And it states that these sustainable aviation fuels, or SAFs, and other new technologies like electric and hydrogen propulsion will eventually help cut emissions by around Mm. 80%. Big plans, but are they too high a leap at this point, though? That's a big question, right? The second headline I mentioned comes from the new US administration. At a recent meeting of the International Civil Aviation Organization, the US had strongly objected to a recommendation on sustainable aviation fuels. And I should Note, too, that the government press release put sustainable, in inverted commas, so it's not so subtle, a message. So basically, the U.S. doesn't want to support this practice of multi-cropping, which is to grow crops that are used for sustainable aviation fuels alongside primary food crops in order to maximize land use efficiency. Now, the U.S. says this will benefit Brazil and hurt American farmers. So a big fat no from Washington. Yep, strong, (laughs) strong messages coming from Washington that they're not really interested in supporting the development of SAFs very much. We probably should just linger very quickly, though, on what these fuels actually are, where they come from, now that we're talking about farming and crops. So essentially, they use sources like used cooking oil and animal tallow, which are then processed to be able to make the fuel that's used in jets and airliners. And and basically, they promise to produce up to 80% less CO2 emissions versus conventional fuels. Okay, carry on. Thank you, Jack. Now, (laughs) there are other issues slowing down the uptake in SAFs as well. First of all, we talk about this a lot. They're expensive to produce. There is limited supply. Uh, The feedstock material you've spoken about are difficult to source and then difficult to process. And they cost nearly double the price Mm. of conventional fuels. There also aren't actually that many companies making SAF. I think at last count, there were just shy of 20 producing at scale. Singapore has one of the largest SAF production plants, by the way, operated by the Finnish company Neste. 
But quantity and supply are still big issues right now. So going back to our discussion earlier about the guilt trip from flying, is the answer then really to just fly less? Hmm, maybe. But one thing that's really interesting to note about the IATA is that they don't really push for less flying. They're not really encouraging people to stop doing that. And they note that most emissions are actually caused by longer haul flights where there aren't any other transport alternatives. And so if the aviation industry continues to grow, which it is projected to do, even if these sustainable fuels ramp up, they're basically being nullified by just having more planes and more flights. So an interesting dilemma that exists. I think that kind of segues to the third headline that you read out there. Right. Airbus, a major aircraft manufacturer. Think your A380, for example. Now, Airbus is dealing with major technological hurdles to develop a hydrogen-powered aircraft. It has been looking at 2035 for the entry of a commercial hydrogen jet. And that's going to be delayed five to 10 years. And the company has cited big hurdles in building up hydrogen infrastructure and supply the whole ecosystem, really. And we know that there just isn't enough green hydrogen being produced out there right now. So it's timing efforts from these companies. Boeing, the major competitor to Airbus, isn't even planning a hydrogen plane at all right now. Yeah, not much good news around the hydrogen space at the moment. Then if we look at the airline companies, then I think they're also making their own moves and they're also reeling back in their ambitions. Air New Zealand, one of the most prominent airlines to do this, it actually ditched its 2030 climate target late last year. And then Southwest Airlines this year is cutting jobs in its sustainable fuel operations. It's also trying to sell a renewables company in the same space that it acquired less than a year ago. So where are the green shoots then, Jack? You know, I'm always trying to be positive. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I think there there are some positives, but this is just taking longer than maybe people anticipated. I think there's a lot of growth still to be unlocked in sustainable fuels. So if you let me bring up a report from Bain and Company from just a few weeks ago, it highlights that global production capacity has more than doubled between 2021 and 2024. So that's something. And it also states that, quote, it's plausible by 2050, global demand for sustainable aviation fuel and renewable diesel could be around double the size of today's ethanol and biodiesel global markets. So the profit pool then from heightened demand could be between 100 billion and 150 billion US dollars. Hmm. So I think if companies could get a get their hands on some of those profits, they're going to invest, right? Mm-hmm. One interesting point is that it focuses on this pressure that still exists to enter the game, to be the emerging winner in terms of technology, basically finding the answers around the feedstock, the source of the fuel, which is not really being treated as a commodity, but as a way to actually abate emissions. And there are still countries that are eyeing those opportunities that come from being producers of SAFs, and the Philippines is one of those. But having said all that, if the trends around these fuels are so negative, it still seems like it could be a risky game to get deeply involved with if you don't emerge as the winner. So risk and reward for the companies in the race right now. On the other hand, though, more players could lead to the types of tipping points needed to make these fuels easy to buy at quantity, right? At a price that makes sense for airlines and the customers who ultimately pay for them. The online platform Sustainable Aviation Futures says some 190 companies have expressed intent over the past decade or so to produce SAFs across over 300 locations. So the interest is there. Yeah. Will be interesting to see how much of this fuel actually ends up in the planes that you and I use if we return to this conversation in 10 years. Probably we won't even pay attention to it because it'll just, you just get on your plane and off you go. But yep. given how laggy the whole ecosystem seems to be right now, yeah, something to watch for sure. Mm-hmm. Watch the space.
Okay, back to our quiz question. <laughs> uh, to repeat it for you, at peak times, how many planes are estimated to be in the sky? So you're saying peak summer How many of them have sustainable jet fuels inside them? Oh. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm joking. I don't know. Yeah. I'm going to guess 20. No, you know what? I'm going to guess 30,000. 30,000 planes. Ooh, pretty congested up there oh, in Leeling's so. world. It's about, it's about <laughs> 16,000 okay. at peak, 16,000 planes at one time. Mm-hmm. And at normal times, it can be around eight to 10,000. So... Are we talking about all planes or like civilian aircraft, passenger planes, big jets? I believe that's commercial <laughs> aircraft, commercial <laughs> aircraft. Okay. We're not counting all, you know, your little private helicopters and <laughs> drones and all of those. Okay. Okay. That's it for this episode of Climate Conversations. Thank you as always for joining us and we'll be back next week. Catch you again then. I'm Leeling Tan. Bye for now. And I'm Jack Ward. Thanks as always to the team that put together the podcast. <laughs> Saya Win, Tiffany Ung, Janani Jahari and Chris Bean of Robert. Bye.